Uh, how many more times in a row do you want to have overtime this week? Well, I just told my players today, I, I think they should talk to the players union. If we're going to play overtime every night, we should get paid more than all the other players in the league because we're playing longer. You know, we're working harder and, um, you know, we're working on that. Coaches too, you know. Uh, hopefully we don't go to overtime next game. Um, in, in all seriousness, um, how, how do you feel? I, I know you've said before that it's not the urgency that's the issue, or but you guys aren't getting out to these good starts. What's sort of the underlying thing there that, that you see tying some of the starts you've had recently together? Yeah, it's a... Uh, you know, we're not playing terrible in these quarters. You know, I mean, look, there's two teams in each each game. And, um, you know, we've seen a, a couple undermanned teams uh, come out of the gates strong. You know, um, last night, um, you know, they made seven out of eight contested long twos in the first half. You know, teams are not going to do that that typically. Um, you know, we had some breakdowns on top of that as well. Um, but, we, we, you know, we just got to make sure we have a, a great sense of urgency. Um, you know, play with a little more offensive flow. You know, I think that'll uh, get our defense set and in uh, and, and, and a better position. And, you know, if we do those those couple things and hopefully get off to a better start. Dan? Hey, Frank, uh, two for you. <clears throat> Said, uh, what was AD able to do today? Yeah, he went through. Uh, we just did some drill work, uh, no contact drill work, which he did all of. And, um, you know, he's, he's trying it a, a little bit of live, live work and, and pick up after practice uh, right now uh, as we speak. And, you know, he's going to see how he feels with it, um, you know, today. But more importantly, uh, how, it, how it responds overnight and see how he feels tomorrow uh, before making any decision on the game. And then kind of, you know, I mean, you, you've, been, you've been in the NBA um, a long, uh, not a long time, but a relatively a long time. Not, not try to, yeah, you're. You don't look it. Um, Thanks. <laughs> how, how, how has the sort of concept of practice evolved in your time in this league? And how, how different is sort of the expectation as what you can get out of practice? Well, uh, it certainly has evolved. You know, I, I think I'm in, I don't know, 22 years uh, or so since I, since I started, maybe 23. Um, and when I first came in, if there was an off day, you, you practiced. And it was uh, an hour to two hours, um, you know, with mostly live work. And, uh, you know, the guys that, that maybe, at, you know, one or two guys would have played, you know, 36 minutes. If, if, if you played that many minutes, you know, you wouldn't practice. But everybody else would. And, um, you know, I think the league has shifted uh, severely over the last, obviously, 20 years. But I think in the, more importantly in the last maybe five to eight years, Whereas, um, you know, I think we're paying more attention to uh, data and science and what's, what's best for these guys' bodies to keep them fresh over the long haul. And, um, you know, there's, I just think there's more of a, a no contact element uh, to today's, the modern NBA's practice and a more of a mental aspect to, to the film sessions. You know, players used to complain about long film sessions, but, you know, now that takes place of, uh, that's in place of practice, not, you know, long film session and then long practice. So, um, you know, it definitely has evolved, but, you know, we, we feel like uh, with our system here, uh, we, we can be very productive, you know, in, in short amounts of time um, without really taxing our guys' legs. Dave? Hey, Frank, uh, along those lines, uh, I have two for you also. The first one is, it's what's been your guys' approach to shoot around this year? <clears throat> well, it's, uh, it's been tweaked a little bit uh, because of the testing, the morning testing. You know, and we've, we've, we've tried a few different things. Um, you know, we got to the point last year uh, on the road where we, we stopped having shoot-arounds, and, and in lieu of that, we would just have a, a team meeting and we call optional shooting where, you know, guys would monitor themselves. If they felt like they needed to get shots up, um, we'd have a bus go over to shoot around. And... Um, and and they would do that. Um, that was really productive for us in the bubble, uh, you know, down the stretch last year. So we've stuck with that that uh, model on the road. Um, I think we had one shoot around where we were across the street from from the arena. I just don't want guys being on buses, um, you know, too much when we're on the road. When we're home, uh, we started having a couple shoot arounds, a couple afternoon uh, walkthroughs at Staples. 
Um, the testing has, has altered that a little bit because it's twice a day now. And you know, now we're not allowed in Staples uh, till three hours before tip, which we typically would have our walkthrough three and a half hours before tip. So um, we went to a team meeting model. It's a long answer, but we went to a team meeting model uh, and now we've adjusted back to, you know, just having a more of a condensed staples walkthrough what we did last game and what we'll do tomorrow. And the follow up, if, if you, if I may, um, we're going to talk to Mark later on today. And I'm just curious if you can speak to his offensive role with your team. Um, some of the numbers, uh, he's you know, one of the lower guys in terms of shot attempts and scoring average among all starters in the league. And how much is that because you have some great scorers like AD and LeBron, and, and how much is, is him still trying to find his comfort level with this group? Well, his willingness, you know, to play a, a role of defend and rebound and you know facilitate offensively has been vital to our team's success this year. You know, we we got a lot of firepower offensively, and um, you know sometimes the right compliment to to guys like that um, are someone that's selfless. You know, that has a great IQ, uh, a feel for passing the basketball, and uh, is willing to just uh, you know sacrifice his own touches and shots for. Um, you know, for the rhythm of the offense and the betterment of the team, you know, and, and you need guys like that uh, to star in those roles if you're going to have uh, the ultimate success. And uh, I think we saw that some last year in different ways, uh, but Mark is definitely exemplifying that right now. Uh, last two, let's go, uh, BT. Hello, oh, Frank. What's up, BT? Everything's good, man. And I'm just wondering, considering that you guys are playing. Every other day, you had three straight overtime games. Why did you decide to have a practice that you accomplished those goals you were looking for? Yeah, as a coach, you're always monitoring uh, rest versus work. And, um, you know, while you know, I do feel like we're a, a little bit fatigued because of the overtime games, um, you know, our, exec our execution isn't quite where it needs to be either. So, uh, you know, we try to have a day where, uh, you know, we could have a light a light load on their legs, but still be productive in improving our execution. Uh, because while we're on a six game win streak, the message to the team was, um, you know, good enough, but not good enough, right? Like we're good enough to, to win these games, but by our standards, we're not, we're not playing good enough. So, um, you know, we got some light work in today to hopefully improve that execution while, you know, trying to keep them fresh. Last question, Alan Sleewa. Hey, Coach. Um, I know it's probably not ideal, all the overtime games, but is there, can you talk about some of the benefit of being in close games and kind of putting yourself in a position for uh, guys for execution purposes? What, what are some of those benefits over these last few games? Oh, there, there's huge benefits. You want this. You know, um, you know, Brian and I were just talking about it before practice. Like, you embrace these challenges. Uh, we talked about it through the game. You know, I want to credit our guys for really not panicking last night. Uh, we got down, to, I think it was 20 in the first half, and um, you know uh, they were playing uh, terrific basketball. OKC was, and um, you know you want to be in a, in a position where where you're being pushed because if you know if they come out and play poorly and, and we're up 15, 20 points, you know there's there's more of a uh, an inclination to to not be as disciplined with your habits and what you have to do to execute. So. Um, you know, the close games, I think, are good, good learning lessons each game, you know, with what we want to run, our defensive coverages, you know, all those types of things. I think ultimately, at the, at the end of the day, sharpen us and, you know, we embrace the challenge of, you know, facing everybody's best shot each night.